Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my loves. It's Destin Choice, and you're watching Choice TV. So I wanted to get on here today and speak about a very triggering subject that a lot of people never really talk about. Now, as you all know, we live in a very privileged, very, I guess you could say sensitive, but also very hypersensitive society. I feel as though that considering we are now living in an era where there is zero tolerance for sexual abuse and sexual harassment, this video is very much long overdue. Now, of course, a lot of you guys have heard it all. This generation is overtly sensitive. They canceled everybody. They want to cancel this person, that person. And Anybody that doesn't fit their narrative, they're willing to cancel, even if they disagree with them politically, financially, physically, or mentally. That's just how the world is nowadays. I mean, Dame Dash said it the best. God. Like, I don't, it just was. Bro, I'm telling you, I'm scared to shoot my shot. I think I get a lawsuit for trying to kiss a girl on that. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> for real. Like, yeah. Oh, I didn't want that you got a lawsuit. Like, I, I didn't know. I, you gave me a sick. I, you know, I, I'm scared of that. Like, I have to really think back of everything that someone could even lie about right now because people are uber sensitive. And what happens is people take advantage of that. So the people is I'm glad it's this sensitive right now because there's a lot of people that are being regulated that should. So it's about time that we start holding accountable all the toxic people in our culture for all their bad behavior that they've done that we've all let slide for a very long time. The world is now waking up and people in the entertainment industry are now walking on eggshells as they should because of these new times that we are living in. And cancel culture is hectic. But there's just one problem that I have with cancel culture, the Me Too movement, and the cancellation parades. Not everybody is being held accountable for their fucked up actions. And I really wanna talk about one person that's never held accountable for their bullshit. You guys saw that title, you guys saw that thumbnail, and I wanted to talk about Trey Song. Trey Song seems to be R&B's beloved star child. Everybody loves him. Women want to be with him. Men want to be him. And it seems like he has the whole entire world on his shoulders and everybody just praises him. But it seems to me that despite the countless things that has been bought up against him, no one ever holds Trey Songs accountable. Some of the stuff you guys know about, a lot of the stuff you guys don't know about because the media tends to suppress a lot of these things and selectively report on things that only fit their narrative. Trey Songs has had an extensive list of people who have accused him of sexual harassment, from celebrities to entertainers to groupies to many other people. But it's funny how a lot of people never talk about that. Trey Songz, without a doubt, has paved his way as one of the kingpins of R&B and pop music with his music style, charm, good looks, and women all over the world have been obsessed with Trey ever since he made his imprint with his classic album, Trey Day. His Trey Day album absolutely skyrocketed him into stardom with singles like Wonder Woman, Last Time, and I Can't Help But Wait catapulting him to stardom and absolutely changing the game. Roughly over 10 years ago, Trey Song was at the pinnacle of his career, and with that kind of success comes with a lot of ego. Trey Songz was on top of the world, and when people get to that high of a pedestal, they start abusing their power. Now, one thing that a lot of people never talk about when it comes to Trey Songz is the fact that pop star BB Rexa went on a Milwaukee radio station, and she talked about her experience with Trey Songz, and let's just say that it wasn't very pleasant. Oh, who has it on you? We want a big celebrity. Who yeah. Who's hit on you? You're a beautiful oh, okay. girl. Come on. Uh, can I say that? Yeah. 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 Uh, no. Nobody's yeah. listening. Yeah. Nobody's now watching. You have to say it. Uh, Built it up. Yeah, yeah, say it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Many, Let's play but, telephone. Okay. You send it yeah, down, and I'll say it. Say I, I'm going to tell for this, it. but I went to a wedding. I went to my lawyer's wedding, and um, we uh, it was like a, they rented like a mansion, and um, everybody at the end it was like only like 50 of us at the end of the party. You know, it was like all these was some of the Victoria's Secret models, like his big clients, and Trey Songz was there with his date. And I go to the pool house, literally, and I swear on everything. He's giving me the eye all night, and I was like, okay, what's going on? This is weird. I go to the um, the pool house, which is like right by the pool, and he literally is at the door and pushes me against the wall mm -hmm. and puts his lips on my lips and is like, let's do this. I'm like, oh my god, uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm supposed to do this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. uh, this story is great. Yeah. That's, that's that's same thing just happened to me with Trey Song. He's like, totally, yes. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, honestly, I'm probably going to get killed for this. I like, probably oh. am. No. But, um, and then he held you down, right? And he's uh, like, no! no! <laughs> this is getting bad, this is getting bad. No, 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 uh, no, it was cool. And I, I said, no, no, I said, I can't, I'm not doing this right Your now. Your lawyer dropped the charges, though, right? <laughs> yeah, stop! No, but uh, I said, I said, no, 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 I'm not trying to do this right now. He was, I was playing. 
fine anyway. I don't, I don't want that anyway. And he walked out of the. Oh, no. that's something else happened, but I just. I'm not gonna say that. That's something else happened, but I just. I'm not gonna say that. No. Oh, that's something else happened, but I just. I'm not gonna say that. But. Uh -huh. Such a smooth way to deal with a, yeah, exactly. an objection. Ultimately. Yeah? I was just playing. Yes. I'm just kidding, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Yeah, it, was, it was hard, though. Although he's crying. It was hard, on the though, because he, no, yes. he had no shirt on, and he literally was like. He's probably the, one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen in my life. Really. Very ripped guy. Like, I was actually like, wow, this guy is absolutely gorgeous. But I said, girls probably sleep with him all the time so I was like oh, I can't no this is not gonna happen right now but I said no. he's at he, you know he that sounds like sexual harassment to me and of course I know some people are gonna say well what if the roles were reversed um that's sexual harassment as well. And if you feel attacked by that, then you should, bitch, because sexual harassment should not be normalized. Now, I do find it a little bit weird how there's literally no news coverage about it at all. Now, that's fairly disturbing. And let's just be honest here. If Trey Songz wasn't a good looking guy, people would hold him accountable. But I guess since Trey Songz is so attractive, people feel as though, oh, well, hell, she probably wanted it. Or hell, like Trey Songz is that guy. I'd want him to do it to me too. No, it's disturbing. And the fact that Trey Song has such an inflated ego that he just assumes that a woman's gonna sleep with him just because he puts the moves on her and kisses her is a little bit disturbing and shows how privileged he thinks he is and shows how much of an inflated ego the man has. Four years ago, back on early January of 2017, Trey Songs and his entire entourage were in Miami, Florida, shooting a music video for his new song, Pick Up Your Phone. The song featured Fabulous and his newly signed artist, Mike Angel. But it just so happened that Kiki Palmer was also in Miami for New Year's weekend, and Trey felt it was a good idea to invite her, considering the two had been friends since she was a teenager. Kiki Palmer did enjoy her time on set because she initially came to drink, enjoy good food, and enjoy the party, considering it was a party and a music video at the same time. Kiki even documented her whole experience on Snapchat, so fans assumed that she was good and she was having the time of her life with Trey and his friends. But it wasn't until Kiki was pressured to appear in the music video that she felt uncomfortable and decided to call an Uber and leave. Kiki left the party and that was the end of that. But it wasn't until the music video released weeks later that she spoke up about the negative experience she had while she was at that party slash music video set. A big reason for her frustration was due to her being filmed without her consent. I palm her pussy like Kiki, like Kiki, like Kiki. She know I'm gonna have to fool it. Tell me she gonna let my bro sit. You guys, I'm honestly so upset and so livid that Trey Songz put me in his artist's video because I told him I didn't want to be in that goddamn video. I went to his house because they was having a party. And I've known Trey since I was 12 and kept in touch with him consistently, but I've known him. He's seen me throughout my life. We were signed to the same label under the same production manager when I was a kid. So it's always been love whenever I seen him. I knew he was in Miami. He's doing a party. Cool. I'm going to come through. They start playing a song that I happen to be in. They start saying like they want me to be in here. One person asks me. I say no. Another person asks me. I'm like, no. People keep asking me. Now, mind you, they've been giving food. They've been giving drinks. And I'm just starting to feel like, yo, I'm being like cornered. like, And I'm not in a professional situation. Like, I came here for a party, but I'm being pressured to do business, and I'm not in the right mind. Mind, I'm under the influence, and I don't feel like it's fair that I'm having to deal with this right now. I feel like, because I didn't go to high school and college, it was like my first experience of, of a dude being like, come on, come on, come on. Like, just do this, just do that, just do that. Like, that's the kind of feeling. Literally, I got so overwhelmed with what to do. Didn't know what to do because I could, like, it, my Uber wasn't going to get there quick in, in quick enough time. So I was like, what do I do in this meantime? I know the shit sounds comical as fuck, but y'all, I hid in the goddamn closet. I hid in the goddamn closet because I was so afraid, like, I, I didn't know what to do. I really, really don't like conflict, and I didn't want to, like, I, I, it was just too much. I started to feel overwhelmed. It was like a lot of people constantly saying something. Mind you, my homegirl was so drunk that when they came in, Trey and uh, his assistant, whatever, like they, they came in trying to find my ass, my homegirl pointed to the closet. Saying some, she in the bathroom, she in the bathroom, they're like, she's not, she not in the bathroom, the bathroom door's open, like, and she kept pointing to the closet, because the closet, y'all, the fact that I fit in there was nuts. Literally, he starts laughing once he opens up the closet and sees I'm in there and sees how nervous I was, he was like, yo, he was like, you don't have to, you don't have to be in the video, he was like, damn, he's like, yo, Kiki, if you don't want to be in a pop-up video shoot and you want to say that, that's fine, that's fine, and it's all good, like, it's good, sis. Flash forward. I'm in the fucking video. How am I in the video? Then I'm thinking back, oh, I'm in the video because you, when I was getting pressured 
they had set me down. He had set me down on the couch like, this is the idea I have. Da, 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 da. But I had no idea that they was filming. He's sitting here telling me that's what he's showing me that they might. And I'm just like, I, I, I would I would never want to say nothing like this public. And I like I never would want to be like, yo, ba 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 ba. But honestly, I would be doing a disservice not only to myself, but to the people that support and follow me. If I didn't be like, yo, call this shit out because this shit just not cool. But then you're wrong. You're wrong for saying something. You're wrong for calling something out. Like, no, my thing is just just respect me and we're all good. The fact that even other females don't want to support each other in speaking up when they feel as if they've been taken advantage of or disrespected, that shit is gross. And I'm really not even saying the half of it. Trey then quickly addressed her on Twitter within minutes of her putting that out there and Kiki wasn't very happy about this so she eventually took legal action and Trey's team, rightfully so, edited her out of the video to avoid further conflict. Camera. But is it right? It's not- It's normalized and that's my problem. That, like forget it's about right. what you're saying to me. The thing is, is we're then telling girls that it's okay for them to be in weird and awkward and you know, potentially uh, sexually harassing environments. Right. And they should endure it and not say nothing about it. That's why I said something about it, because it's like, look, it happens to me too. Okay, so... It happens to all of us. Just because I'm in Hollywood doesn't mean we don't... We all, as but, women, endure that. But at least you, unlike, you know, random girls at the party, at least they came to you when they said, Kiki, we're about to film this video. At least! He mentioned her in the video, and so... No, where's my makeup and hair? Where's my styling? But that's where, where, that's where I no. was telling you through the TV. Honey! But, Come but, on! And you were a little turned up, and you're over right. 21, I'm, you're able I'm to... I'm at the party, we're having a good time, and that's my whole thing is that we have to start saying no when things don't feel right. But now, why do you I just wish, leave? Do I, because I was nervous, honestly, you guys. Think about your first time that you were in a situation where someone challenged you sexually. That is not, you don't, you don't know how to act. And it was very, sexually? very nerve-wracking. I mean, you know how it is. You know, you're a woman of power. How many times have you been tested in situations of how you can stand on your own and not fall at the hands of someone else? But I was the girl who would always leave, though. And I did so. leave. But, it, but I mean, if I hid in the closet for a couple seconds, what the hell? Because I wasn't in the right mind. I had been drinking and eating, and it wasn't a professional environment. It was not a, a place where I'm like, I'm in the right mind to decide if this works with my brand, if I like the artist. I don't know nothing about the artist that it's also in the song. Did you say no to the producer or to Trey? I said first no to the producer, then said no to the assistant, and then said no to Trey, and then said it again after I, you know, came out the closet. What did you mean by sexual intimidation? I mean, just that, sexual intimidation. You know, I mean, like, I feel as a female, often I'm put in situations where Sometimes males will use their masculinity, their, their sexuality to taunt you. You know, I, I hate to have to bring and say that and, and, and make it known, but I mean, look, I ain't the first person that's gone through. People have gone through this all the time in college, in high school, but these aren't the things that I've experienced. So this was like kind of one of my first major experiences. You know, it would be like you going to a party where the biggest jock is there and the whole time he's like, you know, you can get, you can get you. screwed, you can get this, you can get that, you know, and you ain't no little girl no more. Have you heard from Trey since you posted it? I haven't heard from him directly. Trey later responded to Kiki during an interview on The Breakfast Club, and he completely denied all of Kiki's story and completely discredited her and made it seem like she was crazy, she had issues, and she got too drunk that night. Now what happened with Kiki Palmer, man? You tell me, bro. Was she, was she we tried to figure that out up here. I thought, we thought she was allegedly high or drunk to be That's what I said. I said she got closet. high and went and hid in the closet. I mean, I ain't snitching on nobody. <laughs> That's, that sounds like high behavior. I mean, absolutely. I mean, the thing about when you shoot a video, and, and I, I waited to have this conversation because I knew we'd talk about it. But ain't nobody put her on camera without accident. There's a sign on the door that this, there's a video being shot. You step on these premises, you will be recorded. Point blank. Period. I don't have to say nothing else about nothing. Mm -hmm. But I will say that being that her and I have had a friendship. I've known her a long time. We got the same product manager. Mm -hmm. When she came to Atlantic Records, I was uh. What, like on my second album or something? And it was always cool. Like, it's always love between. That's why I didn't want to speak out or, like, she was doing her most to, like, you know, defame me. <laughs> Kiki is on, <laughs> she got me on her Snapchat. I'm talking to girls. I'm smoking. I'm doing all type of stuff. I don't know if she's shooting me on her Snapchat. Did I go on? <laughs> I'm smoking, I'm doing all type of stuff. I don't know if she's shooting me on her snap. Did I go on the internet and say, Kiki, you got me on your Snapchat talking to girls. You got me on your Snapchat while I'm not looking. That's but she, but she has just said that you guys spoke and made up and everything's And fine. that's a lie, too. I ain't talked to her. Come on, Trey. <laughs> no, 
know, man. She said, yeah. She said, y'all spun. How that I heard. Mm -hmm. It's a video that we shot in passing at a party. Like, I don't care mm -hmm. that much to sneak Kiki Palmer in the video for two <laughs> seconds. Who the fuck does that? Don't get me wrong. People have every right to question her story because at the end of the day, none of us were there, but Trey did violate her privacy by including her in a video, which is a form of disrespect after he initially told her she didn't have to be in the music video. And without Trey even apologizing, he simply gaslit her and called her dramatic without even trying to acknowledge why she was upset. Tuh, but Kiki wasn't done yet. If y'all thought she was upset before, she was upset right after she saw his interview on The Breakfast Club and she immediately went on a Chicago radio station giving her piece and her opinion and saying that a lot of victims of Trey reached out to her. Now, shout out to the YouTuber Star J Craziness because she managed to snag this audio before it mysteriously disappeared. So is the friendship over too because you guys had a friendship? I mean, probably after this last thing that he said, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we already came to a conclusion. So the way I feel about it is like, look, man, God bless you. Like, right. I don't have, you know what I mean? It's like, God bless you at this point. I've already let it go, and I was the one that felt away. Right. So it's like, if I can let it go, you can let it go. But if you don't want to let it go, I really don't give a shit, because I've already moved forward. Right. Yeah. Somebody that had true intentions would be like, you know what? My bad, G. Right. You should be looking out for me anyway. I can take it, because the messages I got from other women saying that they were put in similar situations and had gone through, unfortunately, similar events with this person, mm. it made me feel like, whoo, praise God. I mm. knew I did what I needed to do. Of course, Kiki did drop hints what Trey did to her and how he tried to use his charm and his good looks to get what he wants, which to me sounds very similar to what B.B. Rexa said. You know. You can get you can get screwed, you can get this, you can get that, you know, and you ain't no little girl no more. Eventually, Kiki did let it go, and Trey and his fans kept it moving because she couldn't really prove what she was saying. After all, Kiki Palmer is just one person. Did you and uh, Trey songs ever get cool again? Man, you know, I have not talked to that guy. You know, I have not spoken to that guy. Was it a know? misunderstanding? Like, cause you accused him of sexual intimidation. Last you know, year. it wasn't a mis it wasn't a misunderstanding. She told her story of what I tell my truth, and you know, I just thought it was real interesting that after all those things went down, you know, someone else had something to say. So it wasn't like I don't, I don't like when people think that somebody is just gonna be saying something just to say it. First of all, I love black people. I love my people. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna try to ever tear nobody down. Try to tear no black man down. That's not who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not what I stand for. That's not what I'm about. So if I say something, I'm saying something for a reason. And I feel like so many times black women say stuff and nobody gives a shit. Excuse my language. Nobody gives a fuck when sometimes black women say something. But somebody of another complexion, somebody of another color, they say something and then it's like, we're taking it to court. <laughs> it's time to get serious. Hashtag me too. But of course, I want to address another situation. On August 28th of 2019, the infamous groupie and social media troll Selena Powell spoke about an incident that occurred amongst her and her friend Claudia at a Miami nightclub. Selena posted a video onto her YouTube channel alleging that she attended this nightclub to meet celebs and randomly came across Trey songs. Selena says Trey instantly recognized her from social media and demanded that she and her friend hand over their cell phones and get on this private bus filled with other groupies and prostitutes. So we these went guys. to him, we went to him, he's security like pulled us through. They're like, where's your phone? Trey Song was like, yo, give me your phones. And we're like, where's your phone? And he was like, okay. And I gave what? him my phones and then he asked her for her phone. I was like, okay. And then they put us in a, in a fucking sprinter bus and with like 10 other girls like literally and as soon as you saw all the other girls were like oh no 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 like we what don't is want going to on here we so we, we like it was like this and the security like slammed the door like we could not leave at all like we were like yo like we're not trying to be here like we're trying to go home mm -hmm. they were like no like you guys are coming with us yeah i was like oh my god what the fuck so we get to a strip club right mind you again i'm not 21 i'm 18 so i go up to tram like hey I'm underage, I really can't get in, home. like, I really can't get in. And I, like, we thought that, like, you know, he's gonna give us our phones back, and, like, we could've, like, left. And he said, no, 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 you're good with me. You're good with he me, get with Trey songs. Hand. He grabbed her hand, walked her into the club, and was like, Y'all Now, of course, Selena and her friend could have left, could have screamed, could have yelled, could have did whatever they could. But of course, they fell into temptation and they fell into pressure and decided to attend his home and attend his party anyways. Trey allegedly used both their phones as leverage and claimed that if they didn't stay put, 
he would toss their phones over the balcony. You seem nice, like all this stuff to me. And I'm like, I'm sorry, like I just really want my phone. I want to go home. Like I don't want to have any more problems with you. I was honestly like crying to him. Like at this point, I was like, Trey, please, like I just want to go home. Like, and he said, he said, you want to go home? You want to go home? Okay. Your phone right here. Like he was about to throw my phone. I'm like, please don't. Like I have everything. I'm like, please, I have everything on my phone. Like I literally have my whole life. My 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 mom. Like my my insurance. Everything. And he felt bad for me. So he's like, sit sit the f down. So I'm like, okay, Selena, go talk to him, please. I don't want to be here anymore. It's like already 11 in the morning. Later that night, Trey Songz allegedly led Selena into the restroom and forced himself on her. It's going to be on well, all of your phones. <laughs> okay, don't get me. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, she was like, please, like, just cooperate with him. So then he sent me back into the He's like, go wait in the bathroom. And I thought it was like on punishment again. So I was like, oh my gosh, like, whatever it is. So I went to the bathroom. He came in. He, like, pushed me down, made me do some things. And then I fell asleep on the couch, right? Yeah. And then I came out and she was asleep. And I had my whole face was like rearranged. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry, I know it's not funny, but like Selena did claim that she went on for a rape kit and she later tried to pursue a lawsuit. Once Selena went public and her lawsuit went public, Trey Songz quickly went to Instagram to insert some text messages showing that even after that night, Selena was still recently texting him. Basically, he was trying to prove if I did what I did to this girl, why did she still continue to check on me and text me? He said, I brush it off every time, but once you have an allegation, no matter if it's true weight and validation, it's now happened once and to some will be believable. From that moment forward, none of that happened. But she later dropped the charges a month later, which made no sense because it was like, girl, what? You made these allegations. You made a video. You went public. You went to media outlets. And now you're just going to drop the charges. But yeah, I wouldn't lie on Trey Songz. And if I was to lie, I just can't imagine someone being a millionaire and not taking legal action. You did protect Trey by not taking legal action. But that's not the case either. I didn't protect Trey. I dropped the charges on Tremaine because he literally... T I was moving into the building. I was moving into the building and he said that he was going to make it very uncomfortable for me to live there. And I was actually living with the girl. Which doesn't make any sense anyways because this is the same girl who gets approached, pressed, and threatened by celebrities all the time. Then as time went on, weeks later, Trey started messing around with another one of Selena's friends, Eliza. And she claimed that Trey urinated on her without her consent while they were having sex. you ever done? Let's hear it. Oh, I got peed on too. Not peed by, on? Not but I didn't know what was happening. He just did it. He just like... Was Bitch, like, please stay who? Fuck <laughs> Trey song. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Fuck yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. He wants wait, so, wait. me. Wait, how did he surprise pee on you? What? Okay, so, so <laughs> I go to the bathroom. Nut. I go to the bathroom to wipe the nut off my face, like, in between rounds. He follows me in there. He's like, get in the bathtub. I'm like, okay. So I do. And I'm like, laying down. He's standing over me, like, jacking off. And he's like, play with your pussy. I'm like, okay. So I do. And then he's like, play with your tits. So I do. And then he literally just peed on me like that. And I was like, what the fuck on my eyelashes? And he's like, you're fine. And I was like, okay. <laughs> you're but every right. bitch I know that has fucked him says the same shit. Like, Did he pees on him? Yeah, I think and his he's kid. Psycho, like, he, he took my phone and my purse away for like a whole day, held it over the balcony, was like, bitch, if you try and leave, I'm gonna drop this shit. I'm like, but y'all didn't want to believe me. And, okay. And, and, now, let me just say, I'm not too sure how I feel about these three particular women right here, considering that they've all built their platforms off of adultery, promiscuity, and clout chasing. And Trey did address her, and he said, y'all stay ready to believe a bird, revealing that not only Selena, but this girl as well, has also texted him afterwards. Now, many people who have accused Trey of assault and victimizing them have a habit of always dropping their charges. I mean, y'all remember that one incident back in 2016 when Trey Songz allegedly assaulted a woman and choked her out at a party because he got jealous that she was talking to other dudes and then he beat the hell out of her and then she went to the hospital, got a whole attorney. She got Bill Cosby's attorney at that and she was trying to pursue charges and then she out of nowhere disappeared. Celebrities clowned her. Celebrities like 50 Cent of all people clowned her ass and she disappeared off the face of the earth. Also known as Trey Songs of beating her so badly she ended up with a concussion is speaking out about what happened the morning of February 17th. 
Her name is Andrea Buera. I was attending an after party when Trey began yelling at me, choking me, punching me, and ultimately he knocked me to the ground. Her attorney, Lisa Bloom, says the two had been friends for years, and he seemed to become enraged when she began talking to one of his friends. I had to go to the hospital because he hit me so hard that I had a concussion. Guerra says the next day she had dark bruises on her body, face, and neck. Last week, she got a restraining order against Songs. Trey Songs? You picked on the wrong woman this time. Bloom says Songs has a history of allegations dating back at least a decade of verbally and physically assaulting others. The day that Trey Songs allegedly attacked Andrea, he was already on probation in Michigan. Songs attorney Sean Hawley told us we are cooperating with law enforcement through the proper channels and not in the media. Now, as for Buera, she felt she had to speak out and also has a message for her former friend. Trey, I'd like an apology. I want you to get help. And although I'm not your first victim, I'd like to be your last. It's one thing for all of us to question groupies because they have a lot to gain. Groupies have been doing this since the dawn of time. We know that they have a lot to gain financially, physically, and notoriety wise. They have a lot to gain, but what does somebody like BB Rexa and Kiki Palmer have to gain? Both of them kind of have the same story. And Selena Powell kind of shares a similar story with BB Rexa and Kiki Palmer. And let me just say that wherever there's smoke, there's fire. Now, I find it absolutely hilarious that Trey Song seems to always get away with these things. And people always give him a pass of saying, oh, Trey Song is so fine. He's so good looking. He's such a good looking guy. Why would he do that to anyone? And the fact that people can question Kiki's story and question BB Rexa's story, which they should because you should question everything, I do find it funny that even with them and the influence they have, people still didn't believe them and people still gave Trey Songs a pass. Can you imagine what else Trey Songs can get away with? And let me just say, throughout the years, I've always questioned why hasn't this generation called out Trey Songs and given him his Me Too movement yet? But then I had to step back a little bit and ask myself, why didn't the last generation condemn R. Kelly? Why didn't our generation condemn R. Kelly? Back in the 90s and early 2000s, a lot of us saw the videos back then. Yes, for those of y'all who are too young, a lot of us did see the video back then. A lot of us knew these things. A lot of us remember him marrying Aaliyah. A lot of us remember hearing these witnesses speak out. A lot of us remember him divorcing his wife in 2009 and her making a whole bunch of horrible claims. We remember these things. But why didn't we hold accountable R. Kelly? Oh. <laughs> Girl, you're in the kitchen cooking me a meal. Something makes me want to come in there and get a feel. Walk around in your t-shirt, mm-hmm, on. Rutting past, switching that, mm, while I'm on the phone, mm, Cutting up tomatoes, fruits and vegetables and potatoes. Girl, you look so sexy while you're doing a damn thing that I want, mm, In the kitchen, over by the stove. Put you on the counter by the buttered rolls. Hands on the table, on your tippy toes. We'll be making love like the restaurant was called. <laughs> don't yeah. go nowhere, don't move. Whoa. <laughs> and our K situation almost reminds me of Trey Songs. A big reason why a lot of us who grew up in these times didn't hold R. Kelly accountable is because of a few things. R. Kelly is a very handsome man. R. Kelly is an incredibly talented man. He can sing like an angel and he could dance his ass off. A lot of us couldn't see past his talent, couldn't see past his art. A lot of us saw it as a, how can an angel like R. Kelly piss on a bitch, take his dick out and start pissing everywhere and shit. That's how a lot of us saw it. How can somebody like him, how can someone as talented and as successful as him want to abuse and mistreat women? And it kind of goes back to Trey Songs, a big reason why this generation has yet to hold him accountable because, I mean, the man is good looking. He's talented, he can dance, he can sing. He's super, super iconic. So I get why people don't want to hold him accountable, but... What happened to R. Kelly? R. Kelly got old. R. Kelly got washed up. People stopped working with him. And he pissed off the wrong people. So when the quote-unquote elitists or the people who are what I would call the higher-ups get tired of you, eventually they dispose of you. Once you start rebelling against the higher-ups and the elitists, and once you start being disposable, and once you get too old, and once they stop caring for you, and once you lose your value and you stop selling records, eventually 
that go against you. Trey Songz is 36 years old. He's still young, he's still handsome, and he still has a pretty cult-like following. But did y'all know Trey Songz dropped an album three months ago? Don't worry, bitch, I'll wait. A lot of y'all didn't buy it. A lot of y'all didn't support his album. Well, guess what? Did you know Trey Song dropped a single a couple weeks ago? Is it on Billboard? Do you see it trending? Do you hear Trey Songs on the radio? Not that much, not that often. People are slowly but steadily starting to get over Trey Songs. I mean, the only thing that's pretty much keeping Trey Songs afloat within his career is his looks. And that's just to be the, that's just to be completely honest. Once his looks fade away, and once Trey Songz ages out of the industry, and once his music stops gaining as much traction, which it's starting to lose traction now, people are going to turn on him. Once he becomes disposable and washed up, and people stop buying his music, and people stop caring about his music, everything that happened to R. Kelly, everything that happened to Bill Cosby, everything that happened to Harvey Weinstein is going to happen to him. I'm going to give it 5 to 10 years. Within 5 to 10 years, people are going to be all over Trey Song's dick, yelling at him, screaming at him, hating him, and a lot of women, I bet, are going to come for it. I mean, think about it. Trey Song's released a whole sex tape. He released a whole sex tape to promote his new single, and guess what? None of y'all bought it. Not just that, but there's also a lot of other conspiracy that Trey Song's has been involved in that for some reason his fans always turn a blind eye to and always forget about. I just wanted to do something different. I know everybody expected me to like be with a girl and hold her hand and like kiss her on the cheek and all that. And not to say I don't like doing that, but like, you know. <laughs> I got that. I got that. I got that. So that's another video for another day. There's a lot of people that I could have squeezed into this video. There's a lot of celebrities and entertainers who have done some very fucked up, problematic, and some controversial things that I could have addressed. But don't but those videos are for another day. So please be sure to let me know if you know any other predators, sexual abusers, or any other problematic people in the industry that you want me to do a video about or an analysis about. And I'll feel free to do it. Give your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And yeah, that's that. Trace out this bitch. What's happening to me? I put my head on your pillow. And so I have your pillow. I just have, I just have. It's the reason why. When I see you, see you, when I see you, baby, when I never know when you might walk by, ah, when I see you, 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 when I see you.